Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to create a web API using Flask in Python and using MongoDB as the database and JSON Web Tokens as the authentication method. Alright, and I'm going to be using Insomnia, uh, Insomnia REST uh, for testing the API. Alright, so with Flask, uh, the generic way of creating an, an, uh, an web API is you import the Flask, um, you import Flask and then you declare the application and then you use the application to declare your routes of which would be something like slash uh, login slash sign up and so on and so forth. And then under that, uh, we call this a decorator. So under that decorator, you have your function of which runs whatever it is that you need to be done on that endpoint right so i've already gone ahead and created this function so let me just kill this i've already gone ahead and created those functions ahead of time uh, which is uh, the sign up the login the get one and the to do's uh, routes so again i'm using flask i'm using pymongo to connect to my MongoDB, I'm using Course. Uh, for those of you who don't know Course, uh, let me just open that again. Uh, it's cross-origin resource sharing. But, uh, so an error comes up when it happens that your API is on a different domain from your front end. Right, so to mitigate that error, you use Course, uh, Flask Course, so that you can remove those errors. So that's how you implement the course. So you import it up here and then you make use of it down here where it's associated with the app. And then I'm also using bcrypt so that the passwords a uh, user can uh, submit uh, on save user are hashed, right? So that the password is not saved as is, but it's saved as a hash. And then my JSON web tokens here for decoding and uh, encoding the token, right? I'm gonna put all this code in the description, so don't worry about it, because uh, I know I'm moving a little bit too fast, and yeah. So now let's run the app already to make sure that it's running. As you can see, it says this is a development server and should not be used in production. Uh, so you can use uh, you can use applications like Tornado and G Unicorn if you want to deploy these into develop uh, into production, because this is just a deploy uh, development phase. Okay, so now I'm gonna open my Insomnia, which should be right there. And when I just hit the endpoint, because uh, it's running at port 8080, right? So if I run this application, it's uh, if I just run the URL like that, it's not going to find it because I didn't declare any route of nothing. But if I go here, so I'm just going to quickly copy this down here, remove this method. And then define a function. I'm just gonna call it func, and with nothing inside, and say return. Um, let's find something to return. Abacus. Um, let's return a smiley face with the code of 200. Right. So now it's going to restart on its own, and then if we go back to Insomnia and hit that endpoint again uh, of slash, and it should return, huh, it can't find it. Let's find, well, oh, I didn't change the actual endpoint, it's still to do, so let me remove that, and go back to Insomnia and hit it again. Now we should have uh, an emoji there and the status code of 200, right? So mind you, this is not an introduction to Flask, nor is it an introduction to Python or MongoDB or JSON Web Tokens, but it's just for best practices of which you can use when you're creating your web API using Python and Flask. Right. So now let's go into the login functionality. 
with the login functionality, I declared the return data, uh, yeah, the return data up here, and then here's what's going to happen inside the function, uh, which is first of all we're getting the request that's coming, uh, the data, uh, the body, the JSON body that's going to come in from the user, and then in that user we're expecting an email, right? Uh, as you can see here, data, email. So we're expecting an email, and then we're going to search through the database to find the users with the, with the email of which the user submitted. And then from there, we're going to uh, stringify the user ID because it comes in as, a, as an object ID, which is something that MongoDB uses when it's generating its IDs. And then from there, we're going to make sure that the password hashes are the same and then the and then we're going to encode the the information so that we can generate a token and then we're going to delete that password so that the user uh, so that when we return the information back to the user we're not returning the password hash and then from there we're going to generate the return data itself and then down here we're going to return that information of course, here it's in case where the whole process fails, so we want to return the proper messages to the front end and not just uh, and not just let the ap application crash, right? And then for saving a user, which is sign up, we pretty much do the same, just that we're saving the user. Uh, first, we find if the u if that email already exists. If if the count is greater than one then it will return this message. Other than that, um, it's going to continue and enter, the uh, and enter the user data, which is something I forgot here. It's supposed to be else statement, and then just move this inward and done. So yeah, I'm not gonna go through these methods in this video, maybe in another video, uh, we're gonna go through that. So now let's go ahead and save the user and we're gonna be checking our DB to see if that is really working. So up here, uh, the endpoint name is sign up. And the body is gonna be a JSON because we're expecting a JSON. And then we need an email. So email is going to be test at test.com and then the password is going to be, I'm just going to call it pass, uh, one, two, three. And then I'm going to say username, it's going to be name, uh, let's just call it John. And yeah, I think that that's that's enough because we're not really checking the data, which is something I'm going to talk about in the next video about best practices of how you can actually make your API more secure and more fault tolerant. So going back here, let's hope this works because I have not tested this at all. So I'm just hoping that it works as I go through it. So let's send. And we have a success of 200 and user created successfully and status of successful. Uh, this data is manually created, which is something that was here, down here. So successful and user created successfully. So we're just going to go with my Mongo compass. Just going to bring it here. So Mongo compass is, uh, I, I can call it front end too. Uh, just basically a tool of which you can use to connect to your MongoDB so that you can interact with it. So I'm going to refresh here, and here's our database, Pi API, and we have users, right? And if we go into that collection, you see there's the email that just got created right now, and then we, uh, there's the hashed password, and then there's the username of John. Uh, just cancel that. So now our user has been created, so a user has signed up, and now we're going to allow the user to log in. So log in accepts, uh, I'm just going to create, just going to rename this, settings, and let's just sign up, and then close that. I'm going to just duplicate it, 
and say login. So create. So we got login. It's also a post method, not a get. Uh, so login. I think that's what I called it. I'm just going to remove the username here because we don't really need it. And then send. And hoping that works. And voila. We have the token here that was generated, which is that long message. And then we have the user data that's also being returned. And as you can see, the password itself is not being returned because on the login, we delete the password. So, so yeah, that is basically how to use a web API. Of course, you wouldn't be using Insomnia as the basis of connecting to your API, right? There is uh, stuff in between. Uh, uh, there's front-end mechanisms that you can use. You can use your Angular, your Vue.js. You can use any other platform to connect to your API. Or you can use other APIs to communicate with this API. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about best practices of which you can use when creating your API. Thank you guys for watching.